Oh, you heard it from the man himself, and as the saying goes, it's the economy, stupid. And even this economy is so bad that the guy, the guy in charge of it right now is still looking for a new job. And that's why I invited you to the White House, because uh, I'm looking for a job. Uh... <laughs> Yeah. That was today. The president of the United States held a public meeting about the economy at the White House, and nobody knew about it. But we just saw wall-to-wall -wall coverage for the guy running for president, not the current one. So who are you going to trust on the economy, folks? The woman who just caused the inflation that she's claiming that she can now fix somehow. The woman whose extent of knowledge of banking is that community banks are in the community. So the importance of community banks is they are, as they are called, they're in the community. You want that, or you want the guy who did a pretty good job last time? I know who my money's on, literally. But this goes to a larger issue. Trump is out there talking about the actual campaign promises, talking about the actual policies that he has. Kamala's out there promising you that they will, oh, I'm going to bring down prices and things. Well, how the heck are you going to do that, lady? Honestly, answer me that. Joe Biden didn't have a clue what he was doing. Kamala certainly doesn't have a clue because she doesn't have a plan. She just is going to keep doing whatever Biden's been doing or not doing. Not only has she never had an original thought, she has no idea how the economy works, folks. You know, I tell you what, I will give, I will write a thousand dollar check right now to Planned Parenthood right now if Kamala Harris could explain to me, unscripted, with no aides present, how the GDP is calculated or what the yield curve is or what percentage of taxes the 1% actually pays since she wants to tax them more. She can't do that. Her plan is to just get elected. See, see the difference between the Republican platform? I realized this the other day. Republicans are actually running to make your life better. Democrats are just running to get elected and to keep power. They, and they will say and do literally anything, including lie to you. They, do, they were just caught taking legit headlines like this, where it says, Harris will carry Biden's economic record into the election. She hopes to turn it into an asset. They took that headline and they changed it in like Photoshop or whatever, and they put it to this. VP Harris's economic vision, lower costs and higher wages. That's not what the publication said. And then they put a bunch of ad dollars behind it, kept the AP tag on it as if it was their real reporting. It's unbelievable. It, look, if Democrats' economy was so, in fact, star-spangled awesome, they wouldn't have to literally rewrite and Photoshop headlines. Trump didn't. Look. There's not a salient person on the planet that can say Trump did a bad job on the economy. But Democrats, they try to spin it again into COVID. He just talked about it. Their talking point is that Trump lost more jobs than any other president, which is total garbage. If you recall, at the advice of the left wing's darling Anthony Fauci, which, by the way, that guy is gone. It would never happen again. We would never allow that to happen. But we did. We shut down an entire economy for 14 days because that was the scientific advice he was getting at the time. And mostly after that 14 days, Democrats kept their states closed for months. And then Biden takes credit when those 16 million people went back to work as, you know, he took credit for them as new jobs. Even though the labor participation rate now is lower than it was under Trump pre-COVID. I mean, people think we're stupid. So when I see a poll like this that shows, oh, Kamala's more trusted on the economy than Donald Trump, I laugh. It doesn't make me nervous. It does make me trust the polls less. And this is why the media isn't trusted. And now even Stephen Colbert. I mean, Stephen Colbert, Trump was talking about how little faith they have in the media. Stephen Colbert, this is the perfect example, is making fun of CNN here to their face in New York City, and the liberal audience is laughing. Roll it. I know you guys are objective over there, that you just report the news as it is. <laughs> I know, CNN makes a... I know that's supposed to be a laugh line? I wasn't supposed to be, but uh, I guess it is. Um. It, it turns out you can't keep lying to us and not get tagged for it. From the people who, by the way, tell us how dangerous misinformation. It would be laughable, but it didn't help them win elections. But maybe the Colbert interview and other sentiments like that is starting to sink in because... And this blew my mind. Jim Acosta, of all people, remember this guy? Trump hating the White House correspondent for CNN. Now he's an anchor. He asked a Kamala Harris spokesman this. They went to, across the battleground states last week, uh, generating rallies of, of thousands, 10,000 here, 15,000 there. Uh, yeah. But, but the Michael, you know, a campaign do, rally uh, is not a press conference. Be I, 
Do you mind if I cut in? I mean, you know, a campaign rally is not a press conference. Why hasn't she had a press conference? She's the vice president. She can handle the questions. Why not do it? I don't want to, you know, belabor this. But one interview before the end of the month, I mean, that's, that's not a lot. I mean, can you commit to a press conference before the end of the month? We will commit to directly engage with the voters that are actually going to decide this election. Blah, blah. It's just noise. And the longer she goes without a press conference, the worse it's going to be. I think Trump should just follow her around the campaign trail, just holding press conferences right outside of her, her, her events. That would be the greatest troll ever. Trump just answered like, I don't know, 2,000 questions in the last week. And Kamala Harris is still working on her Venn diagrams.